At a two-day workshop organized by the Gender Ministry to discuss issues such as human trafficking, forced and child labor confronting the sector, representatives of various cooperatives were educated on regulations and declarations that are against the practice. According to a study by the Department of Cooperatives, a group of cocoa producers, mostly cocoa farmers in the southern sector of the country, transport people, particularly children, to exploit them as workers on their farm. Speaking to City News, William Kwashi Dali, who is a deputy registrar at the Department of Cooperatives, says farmers who are identified to be engaging in such act will face sanctions which include denial of farm inputs as well as prosecution. When we finish this, we will train our officers to be able to form what we call child protection or human trafficking committees in the various cocoa cooperatives. So within the cooperatives, they will identify three or five, three or five people, and they will form the child protection or human trafficking committee. We want to use the peer mechanism where they themselves know if Mr. Amadou goes to the north and brings children or forced labor to work on his farm, those cocoa farmers within the cooperative, they will know because they belong to the community. And so with the Child and Human Trafficking Committee, we want to use this model to be able to bring the incidents at least down to the minimal level or completely eliminate it. If the members are recalcitrant and they are still persisting, they will sanction them either by expelling him or her from the group and for that matter he will not benefit from the inputs from Cocoa Board or we will be intro you will now introduce the criminal aspect where the, uh, the law enforcement will come in because it is a crime to force somebody to work on your farm. The program's director for Expertise France, Sergi Akpalu, tells City News, although available data shows there is a downward trend in human trafficking cases, constant sensitization and prosecution would deter people from engaging in the act. We've got information recently from a document from the ILO uh, in joint collaboration with uh, IOM and other stakeholders that proves that numbers of trafficking are rising. Uh, but that could be also due to the fact that maybe more people are getting more aware of the issue and they also know uh, the right place to go to raise those complaints. So um, the indication again from the regions is that there needs to be more awareness. There needs to be more training for those who are involved. There's a need to be uh, more equipped also for those working in that field, uh, more, be more resourceful in terms of fighting the menace of trafficking. In the previous years, we had low number of convictions, but as the year keeps going, we keep getting better and better, like the government keeps getting better at tackling issues of trafficking, having a lot of people convicted. Uh, and I'm definitely sure with the training that we have done and with the awareness that we are raising uh, in the, this year or the next few years, we we'll have more to, to deter uh, those who want to, be in, want to involve themselves in trafficking or, or smuggling of migrants and all that sort. Representing the Gender Minister, Director of Human Trafficking Secretariat at the Ministry, Sena Owusu Gibson, called on all stakeholders to join hands in the fight against illegality while stating that the ministry is making significant strides in the fight. We are making a lot of progress. All stakeholders would need to be brought on board to make sure that this fight, we succeed in this fight against human trafficking. The ministry currently, we have two shelters, one for adult females and then one for children, which takes both sexes. And so the shelter uh, houses children that are identified and rescued from trafficking. You know, so in that shelter, they are provided with some social support. In the shelter, they are, they are fed. We, are provide, we provide medical assistance for them as well. The support from all of them, we are able to provide some interventions for them and reintegrate some of them back into their communities. Uh, some are also provided with skills training. So currently, uh, at the various shelters, we have uh, that training program for them.